Ah, ah, hi everyone, Fresh the Shaved Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Foles record, part one. Everything not saved will be lost. This is the latest full-length album from UK-based indie and dance rock outfit Foles. Now on their fifth record here, an album that is actually set to be connected to a sequel album dropping later this year. Now, despite my track record for loving pop and rock groups that uh, emphasize groove. Foles have never really resonated with me outside of their debut album, which featured a way more frantic and noisy and mathematical sound than what the group is currently working with. In fact, every move the band has made since the release of that album has resulted in blander and blander music. I'm not even that into the band's most well-received album to date, Total Life Forever, but it's been about four years since Foles' last album. I I did enjoy a few tracks leading into the release of this LP, so I don't know, maybe it's the dawn of a new era for the band. Maybe they'll bring some excitement back into the fold. And that is sort of the case here. The band does sound excited to be back, especially on a pretty short run of songs right after the first few cuts on the album. The song White Onions features a very prominent and plucky guitar melody that might not be all that memorable in my opinion, but it kind of makes up for that lack of memorability with some high velocity drumming. Cacophonous harmonies crashing into each other and with this roaring death from above 1979 style bass. The track also features some of the most thrilling and shouty vocals Foles have laid down in years on one of their records. The song In Degrees is another highlight for me on this record. Features this very bright, shimmery synth loop that catches my ear immediately. Captivating groove, fantastic rhythmic layers as the track progresses along. Also a very shouty and exuberant group chorus that reminds me of Talking Heads quite a bit, like Fear of Music, I, Zimbra era talking heads. I also like the progression of the song Syrups a lot too, which kicks off with this very reserved, clunky bass line that ticks along like clockwork. The band lays some cavernous vocals on top. It progressively gets a little washy, a little trippy. I'm just feeling the sound wash over me. And eventually the band explodes into this building groove that gets more and more intense and eventually reaches one of the biggest climaxes on the entire record. So there are some truly fantastic highlights on this album Album that, in my opinion, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the band's best contemporaries when they were putting out their best work. Whether it be Battles, or Ch -ch 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 or LCD Sound System, you could also list Block Party, and I also want to mention Everything Everything. A newcomer, yes, but still a group who I think over the years has been greatly inspired by the work Foles have put in on their past albums. So while I do like this handful of cuts, the album unfortunately does not stay this consistently great throughout its entirety. Much of what surrounds these tracks to my ears just merely sounds okay or average. You have some pretty tepid openers on this record. The song Moonlight features a, a lot of reverb and a lot of melodrama and for... I'm not gonna say nothing, but for not much. The song Exits is similarly washed out and kind of toothless as well, despite its driving groove and punchy kick drums. It's got a lot of rhythm, it's got a lot of momentum to it, but the tune is pretty drab. Save for the prominent shouty and falsetto vocals, the track On the Luna sounds like an awkward transition from a progressive rock group of the 70s trying to adapt to the new wave wave of the 80s. The slick guitar riffs crashing into a all of glistening synths on this track, it just doesn't really do all that much for me, especially given how much these synths tend to swallow up a great deal of the mix. I do appreciate the kind of in-the-moment organic and, and what sounds like almost live sound the band has brought to this record, but uh, it has led to some recordings that uh, I, I think are, are a bit smudgy and, and not in a complimentary way, because on this track I really feel like I'm listening to pop rock, but without the finesse I think a pop group should have. Meanwhile, the track Cafe to Athens sounds Sounds like what you would get if you took Radiohead's King of Limbs and replaced a bulk of the tones on that record with uh, sounds that are a lot more plucky and percussive, like if you uh, had some kalimba or glockenspiel or xylophones all over the record. I mean, I guess it's all right. It's certainly better than Sunday, which sounds like a horrifically boring indie folk outfit going electric for the first time, only to deliver the least fulfilling song on the entire album. The band eventually hits a kind of fast and explosive finish, but the transition to get to that point isn't really that great, nor do I think the first leg makes a uh, the payoff worth it. The very blissful and droney closer is okay, it's a moody piano 
ballad, set against this very bright, shimmery wall of synthetic sound. Again, it's fine, but I think it would be more gratifying if the lead-up to this point had uh, been more interesting. Overall, I think this record was okay. It was listenable. Definitely the band's most worthwhile effort in quite some time, but I can't say I'm walking away from this record being all that excited for part two frankly. I'm feeling a light six on this thing. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Foles, forever.